Hello, everybody. Welcome to tonight's event, um, tonight's webinar by Startup Campus. My name is Merle from Impact Up Zurich, and together with my colleague Natalie, okay. I co moderate you through tonight's event. This topic is from research to startup, and we are very excited to have two interesting speakers um, here with us today. Thank you so much, Anna and Gianluca, for coming. And uh, we hope that you all have a good time, that we have some great discussions, and that you will have some great takeaways from tonight. Without any further ado, I would like to move to our first keynote speech from Anna. Like I said, she's from Dimpora. She's the CTO and co-founder of Dimpora, which is a chemical company that develops sustainable material for outdoor clothing. But I would say, Anna, the stage is yours. And um, we are very excited to hear about your journey at Dimpora. Thank you so much. So, yeah. Let's share my screen. Let me, if you, do you see everything? Yeah. So I won't like, I won't talk too much about Dimpora. I'm, I think I was really asked to talk about my view and my journey to, towards what we are right now. And so I'm just going to quickly uh, mentioning that we're doing membranes. Uh, membranes need to be breathable, waterproof. And on top of this, we're trying to stay as much sustainable as we can. Um, and we use those membranes for mainly for sustainable outdoor garments. So in jacket, that was actually our first prototype. <laughs> um, now a bit more on the journey. So the, the kickoff was actually the Greenpeace campaign um, detox in 2014. This is where my co-founder Mario uh, Stucki uh, started his master thesis in the group of uh, Professor Wendelin Stark at ETH. And uh, the idea there was to remove everything that was fluorinated from the, from the current market leader and try to push a new type of, uh, of membrane, of textile membrane on the market. And then from this on, Mario actually did his master thesis and the first jacket that was, uh, uh, I remember when we were, we were all doing our master thesis at the same time. And uh, he was super proud and showing this jacket and we were all, into our little master thesis that were not that apply actually. And we were all very jealous of him having this, um, this product that he could show everyone. And then he continued uh, from this master thesis to do a PhD on this membrane, while I was also doing a PhD also in material science and also like polymer um, science. And we stayed friends. So I think maybe this is something I should have said. We, are, we studied both together. We were very good friends during our studies and during our PhD. And then he, when I finished my PhD, he asked me to join him in this journey. And this is where I joined in May 2018, where I continued to improve the recipe a little bit, to tweak it here and there, and most, most importantly, to actually start scaling. Because you have to imagine that in the lab, you have something that looks like this and works very well, and you have to bring it to scale. Uh, on one meter fifty and like thousands and thousands of meter long, so that was actually the the real challenge of uh, of me joining the company. Um, and then in January nineteen, we decided to incorporate uh, because we uh, we gave each other actually three months to see whether we could work together. You can imagine that being friends doesn't necessarily mean you can create a startup together. So we gave each other somehow a, a time to see whether we would kill each other or if we, if, we would, if we would work out. And at the end, everything was, was great. And we decided to incorporate in 2019. And then since then, it's really about growth and scale and always continue innovating. So we, are, we also have some new, new product in our portfolio and we are always aiming and developing some more. Um, in May 2021, we had our first seed round of approximately 2 million. So that helped also a lot. And since then, we have been uh, growing our team. We are now 10 and hopefully soon more. Uh, about team, I just want to, I think this is uh, something that is really, really close to my heart. And um, it's, the team is extremely, extremely important. 
And um, here on this picture, we recently did it. It just showed the the, cha the chaotics behind behind the picture. We also have the the very formal one that uh, Mario prefers to show, but I think I really prefer to show the other one. It shows a bit more um, what is really behind the team, like a, a lot of laughter and a lot of uh, of mutual respect. Um, now more on my personal motivation. So why why did I start this company with Mario? And I think that the first thing that came into my mind when I was asking myself this question was the the freedom that uh, that it brings. And uh, that it's not a freedom like I can do whatever the I, whatever I want, but it's more of a freedom of decision, of strategy, of um, of deciding which direction, of uh, if I want to go buy a bike, I'm going to buy a bike in the middle of the afternoon. That's also important. Um, and, and also the second was a huge personal learning. So I think in the last three years, I became much more self-aware of, of what I can do, of what I'm good at. And, uh, and I think that I also have to thank Mario for this to some extent. Uh, I think we are pushing each other a lot uh, for the greater good. And... Um, it's a non-stop learning curve and I'm, I'm never ever bored. That's really, really also a, a, an important thing. And I wake up every morning pretty motivated. Um, the third one was work with the mission. So I, as, as a kitsch as it sounds, it's really important for me to work with something that I know I try, at least try to make a difference. And in the textile industry, at least uh, there is really a need for difference. And the fourth, that's more on the product. Like at some point you start to, to, to be so proud of what you have achieved. I mean, you look back and you think, oh, wow, actually, I mean, I started from this. And now on the picture, you see the, those were the first like thousand meters of, of, uh, of membranes and laminate that we, that we made. Um, and on the right, the first collection that we've done. So when you see this jacket, you, you really like, you feel, okay, we've done it actually. This is the first product we are selling these. Uh, people are wearing these on the ski slope in whatever Termato. and we will get feedback out of this and we were really happy um, about the partnership with Wotov on this. The fourth actually already, uh, fifth I already mentioned is the challenge, constant challenge. I mean this has some good parts and some bad parts of course. Um, you never like, you cannot never chill. If you have a little win you always have to continue and you always have to look for the next problem and at the end, those are mostly in the operational part. It's really like uh, you have little fires everywhere and you're trying to like put water a little bit um, all around all around the place and try to, to, to take these fires out. And then the team, I think that uh, for me, the, the, what I was, I'm really proud every time that I see that people in my team evolves and gets better at what they're doing and feels more comfortable with us and with the team and with the project. And I think that we are, Mario and me, we are playing uh, some parts in it, and that's really rewarding. Um, finally, I mean, almost finally, meet, uh, I get to meet and to work with the same mindset people, and I get to meet a lot of very, very cool entrepreneurs. So if you participate in all this workshop and all this accelerator, you get to meet all these amazing people. And I think that uh, uh, that's, and you, you will become friends with some of them, and that's, I think, the, very cool also to be able to exchange for people that are living the same things as you do. And then of course, if I wouldn't have put money, nobody would have believed me. Uh, of course, to some extent, we have we are hoping of a, of a financial success. And uh, it's not my main motivator, but it is a motivator. And uh, and uh, even though you there, was, there are a lot of sacrifice along the way, like Doing my PhD, I didn't earn a lot of money, and neither the first three years of the startup, neither actually right now. But I mean, it's kind of an investment in the future. And um, but I, last time when I turned thirty, I looked at my uh, second pillar, and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> what am I doing financially? But now I got I got to 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 see all the cool things uh, that I just listed, and I was I called myself down again. But then, as I also mentioned, there are successes, but there are also failures. And uh, th those are very important to, to, uh, to mention also to future young entrepreneurs so they don't have the impression, 
all the others before did all right and you were you were the only one that's doing all wrong and that's absolutely not true everyone has problems everyone don't have solution right away everyone is just like trying and, and get along with the day so um i guess you just need to really stay motivated and concentrated um on the final product but let's first start with successes uh what made Dimpo successful so far i think uh, disagreeing with your co-founder is uh, it's very important uh we have a lot of uh, i mean i would say nice fights because at the end, there are not, not real fights, but those disagreements are actually bringing the company much further down the road. And this is where we are really trying to find the right solution for both of us. And it's usually also the right solution for the company. And then hire the right people. You need to get the people that are ready to hustle. You need to get the people that are ready to, to uh, write Christmas cards, as well as uh, talk to a CEO of a company. You need to have the people that, that gets... Uh, that gets the work done and, and don't complain too much and are motivated by, by the challenge of it. And that's really important. And then you need to have a good network of helpers. Uh, need to do You need to have the, the people that knows the people and uh, those people need to be able to do that for free. So we got a lot of help uh, really. And this is also why I'm always willing to help. I think this is good karma. So I get I get help and I help. I guess this is a good uh, good equilibrium. And then I mean uh, it's as easy as this. I won't say you have to win prizes and get media media attention. Um, uh, the first thing that you do is really to apply to all these uh, these um, uh, grants from Switzerland or for for from industry. So from all these things that you probably all know, and you try to get this free money and free coaching and free all these things and and those are really important uh, um, to to start the project and not to be to totally uh, out of money and already need to take on investors too early on otherwise you have to give probably half of your company already away and then on the failures i think the big i mean i call failures are like learn learnings i think this is fair um Scaling takes much more time than we thought. We thought, okay, that's, how can how difficult can it be? I mean, super reproducible in the lab. We have a great result. It's gonna be easy. It's not easy at all. Like we not. You have to use a lot of different uh, machine. You have to talk to a lot of suppliers. You actually have to do a huge work of convincing people to to try. Um, sometimes uh, the the answer will be, it's, it's not what we used to have, it's, it's different, we don't want this. And so it's really a lot about convincing at the end. And then raising money takes a lot of time. <laughs> like don't underestimate, we totally underestimated it. We said, ah, for it's gonna be different for sure. Um, at the end, we had the global pandemic in the middle and uh, that was really, really tough. And at the end, we, we ended up with a very good deal, but um, it really takes more time than you will think. And then understanding your supply chain, uh, I think even now after three and a half years, I, I think we are still learning things. Like there are still things that we didn't take into account or that we didn't foresee, or actually we thought this industry was producing this, but at the end they actually also relied on another industry behind. Um, so there are always surprises like this that are a little bit difficult to, to get a full pictures of. And then the last, hiring the wrong people, we've done this mistake. I think every startup done this mistake and uh, probably it's also how you learn to, to find out what who are the real, the, the good people, but uh, that's, that's definitely a failure to try to avoid. And finally, I have some advice. I mean, take it or leave it. That's really, that's really on me. That's my advice for you guys if you wanna create a company. Mostly from research to startup, which is the, the theme of today. Um, after my PhD, you need to think that in a PhD, you, you, you have the liberty and everyone is, everything is paid for it. And you can buy whatever chemicals that you want. And it doesn't matter if it's scalable or not. But you have to stop your, your uh, somehow as your scientific curiosity, but also not to much because you still want to become innovative you still want to continue your product and you still want to be to, to make it better in the market that is already quite competitive 
but you need to stop your brain to always want to investigate this. Oh, but maybe if we could add this, that could done that. No, you need to focus on your product. You need to bring it to market. And, and that's for me, and I think for every scientist here in the room, that's something that is very difficult to, to like turn off. And then you have to put on the no clue why it work, but let's try to scale it at. Uh, that's also very important because if you, if you like, if you, how can, I, how can I say it? Like, sometimes you don't understand why it worked, but you have to already try to scale it because you will find some other problems by scaling. And you would never have found out those problems by scaling if you just try to have the perfect recipe in the lab. So as soon as you have something that is viable, scale it and don't try to work too much on it. Like you need to, there, there will be other problems coming up your way afterwards. And you can try to solve them. Then, it's also important you decide when you want to give up on an idea because everybody's going to tell you it's not possible, it's, it won't work, uh, it takes too long, it will take too much money, uh, that, that this machine doesn't exist or that machine doesn't exist and it's not true. Um, I mean, it's probably true to some extent, but machines can be built, uh, engineers can be hired. And uh, I think that's also something that you need to tell yourself, like it's you decide to like, I want to stop uh, I think I have invested too much energy and, 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 and time now. I think it's time to continue working on something else or whatever. But you have to take this decision, not someone else. And then use all the network that you have. Like, even if you think, ah, this, my, this person, I don't think that they know this, are, this other types of person, always ask around. I mean, it doesn't cost to ask. And uh, that also... That is also true for you. If you think that I, I know someone on LinkedIn or that, that, that can help you, just ask. I mean, maybe I will answer. I mean, I hope I will answer. But like that, if you don't ask, you will never get the help. So nobody will, will queue to help you. That's maybe more my, 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 my point. And then at first, you have to participate in all the accelerators and fund that brings money and use the minimum time possible on them. Uh, <laughs> and those, there are a lot of those. And as soon as you have a good idea and, and something to pitch and, and a viable like lab scale product or something, you, you will have the chance to win these types of money. So it's very important that you go for it and uh, that you try to get this free money else you, you, you will have to ask investors to invest and there are, it's too early stage. You also need to know when to stop participating at those uh, accelerators and coaching because at some point you know actually more than those coaches know and it gets really repetitive and at some point it's also a big waste of your time so be be aware of when you think okay now i spend so much time on this i earn i earn that much of money and that much of media attention or whatever and now that's it like let's con let's concentrate on scaling up the product and, and bring it to market and finally, my very last advice, but probably one of the big, most important one, is do not do it alone. Really find someone, find your person. Sounds very kitsch now, but really do not do this alone. Like even just to check an email, like does it make sense? Is is this sentence right? I am. Does it say the right message that I wanted to say? And if you don't have even the person to be able to read an email after you, that it's really difficult because everything is on you. And uh, and yeah, I think uh, Marlo and me, we have really found each other, even though uh, sometimes it's difficult, but I guess it's the, that's, that's, the, that's the case for everyone. And we, we, I think we will have really a good team and we do, do a great job together. So yeah, that's my cue. Maybe a bit longer than 10 minutes. I hope I could um, like bring you some motivation to, to create something great and bring your idea to, to reality. And, uh, if you have any questions, please contact me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anna. That was a very inspiring talk. Um, I really liked your hands-on and, and concrete tips that you gave. Um, I think that's a really good takeaway for, uh, for everybody that's here tonight. Uh, we've already seen there are some uh, questions in the chat box, which is amazing. Um, just to let you know, we will have a combined Q&A after the second speech um, has happened because sometimes uh, questions are good for both the speakers. So thank you so much. Keep on popping the questions in the chat box or write them down for yourself. We will have a 
good and, and long Q&A afterwards. So without uh, any much uh, more talk, I would like to give the stage to Gianluca from Synhelion, um, which is a, a very interesting startup that basically uses CO2 uh, to create fuel, which sounds like an incredible technology. Um, Gianluca, the stage is yours, and we are very excited to have you here. Thank you, Marilyn. It's my pleasure to be here. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm here for Sinelion, but I will try to talk a bit more, uh, trying to bring in a, board, a bit more the learnings that I had uh, um, in the past. I mean, I went basically through uh, five entrepreneurial adventures. So <laughs> I've seen many things. And, um, and interestingly enough, it will be telling that, you know, I will mirror many things that uh, Jonas and Anna have already mentioned, which should be actually also uh, wraps, you know, I mean, it's an interesting fact to see that there is a convergence about the learnings. And uh, perhaps um, this brings me to the main, the, the first point that I would like to bring to you. And the first one is that you have to try. You know, nowadays there are amazing instruments, as Anna mentioned, as we know from uh, ETH, from InnoSwiss, uh, the Impact Hub. There, there are many, many tools, there are books. Uh, doing a startup has been a codified thing. I mean, there are learning schools and everything and how to do this. However, this will not substitute the experience of doing it. And while you will, while you will do it during this, you will learn unique things, unique things that cannot be taught. And it's always amazing every time you look back, uh, you will see that you were naive every time and you think that even after 10 years of doing this when i look back even how i was seeing in helion five months ago i see that yeah i wasn't much more as i am now as we are now and this learning is is really what comes from doing thing and it is really really um perhaps the most central thing that i would give you try 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 this adventure then um the second point is that I believe that it's very important to mention is that every entrepreneurial adventure is unique. So you will, again, find the most uh, trendy book about uh, the lean startup or whatever. I mean, you have all these kind of guidelines and everybody will tell you, you need to do it like this. You will go to investor, investor will tell you they want to do it like this. They want to hear this. But... Um, especially in the deep tech space as the space we are operating in uh, is called. This is um, sometimes every, it's really different. I mean, like every single company has its own story. And this brings to the fact that you need really to think with your own head. I mean, as Anna said, I mean, at the beginning, people will tell you a lot of things. It's very important to listen. It's very important to continue to question your ideas, your visions, but also not to be carried away in the stream of, uh, of these opinions, because you will ask 10 people, you will get 20 opinions. And at the end of the day, what really matters um, is what you know, because the more that you go ahead, the more you will be the person that knows the most about your field and your company. So think with your own head, remain humble, question your things, but believe in what you feel and think inside because you know people around you will tell you it don't work it does not go you cannot do it like this and at the end of this we have countless uh, um, uh, stories behind us that show that actually the people that fought against this mainstream status quo and and went beyond it are the ones that managed to create among the most amazing companies that um, have been created on planet earth so then <laughs> what do you need? I mean, again, the first thing, I mean, this is obvious. Everybody says it's so trivial, but it's also so, so deeply true. People, people, the team, those are everything. Those are your bodies. Those are the people that uh, share with you the sleepless nights uh, that come, many of those, the many hard ones. And, um, and the company is made of people. I've experienced also being a company that was then run by people that, that overtook the management of the company so the people were irrelevant the company does not exist anymore people are central even if you have like a ton of ip if you have crazy stuff i mean still people make the company 
And to this, I come something that Anna also very rightly pointed out as the last um, observation is never remain alone. I did this experience once of one of the ventures. I remained alone carrying out this project that was not even a anymore a company. You cannot operate anymore. There is no future for that. You don't have the energy, you don't have the capacity. It's an it's a involving spiral. Don't remain alone. Don't think that you can do it alone. You need people. Not at least psychologically when <laughs> the times get hard and they will get hard. Then money. You need a lot of it. I mean, you will do the first business plan and you think, okay, yeah, I can do this. I can squeeze in this. I can do this. I can spare this. I mean, especially in deep tech, forget it. I mean, uh, uh, don't do budgets that are constrained that try to streamline. I know it's easy to say now, I mean, for me, Nassin Alien has grown to a point where we managed uh, to raise and everything It has been hard, but nevertheless, but still, uh, even at the beginning, try to be sure that you have enough money because otherwise you'll end up in being alone <laughs> or, to be, or uh, in a situation where you basically cannot carry out your, uh, your projects. And this is the worst. Then you are basically in this situation then you go into this kind of hibernation mode that, that, that it is uh, from which is very, very hard to go out, not least psychologically. And this brings, of course, to the point that you will need to raise money. This is, I mean, this is the toughest thing, especially if you come from a technological background and your soul is with technology, even market oriented, even if you have a business vision, but I mean, you are a more... Um, a technology person, perhaps, uh, and less a salesperson, you know, like this pitching and uh, these convincing investors is really one of the passages uh, that, you know, defines the coming of age of, um, of a startup. And um, then perhaps something that is more a bit more specific to the transition from the lab to, uh, to the, an industrial development is... Um, the sense of urge and purpose that you have when you do a commercial product actually it was something that struck me because you know I, I love academic research. I mean I, I I mean I thought you know the lot of my PhD I may would have done that for a longer time. But on the other side, when you need to do something for a market, when there is a vision, when there is something that you feel inside that you want to where you want to go, a place where you want to where you want to bring your development, there is a totally different sense of uh, uh, urge urgency and purpose and this is also what Anna again says sometimes you just need to forego even with the pain in your heart about like the beauty of some more academic formulation and more academic research and you just need to go quick and dirty to the team to scale up um, um, to the team to um, to the next step to um, and uh, to try to uh, walk the um, roadmap to the final commercial product or the first commercial product uh, as fast as you can, because it's always longer than what you think and what everybody thinks. And sometimes, even if you think that it's longer, you anyway to sell it short, <laughs> because it's again what investors want to hear. Uh, so also there again, you need to be um, very much concerned in being focused fast and uh, having this urgency and focus always in um, clear uh, at the center of your uh, vision. And the last point again is funny that the, again Jonas brought this up. I put like really literally uh, never stop dreaming because dreams make these dreams. Again, it's those are platitudes. You hear them all the time, but it is really like this. I mean, also in the hardest times when you think that you don't make it, when you think that you will not overcome the dream of seeing this becoming a reality, of seeing this your products. Uh, being used uh, on broadly in the market, seeing, I don't know, for me, I mean, it's an alien thing like a field of towers extending, producing large amount of fuels, imagining this, visualizing this dream, visualizing the beauty of it, of seeing the mirrors uh, shimmering in the morning light, you know, these kind of things. As kitsch as they are, uh, they are what keep you alive and what, what I mean, at the end of the day, remind the inner fire that the drives at the end, the entrepreneurial spirit and the adventure spirit that needs to be in uh, anyone trying uh, this path. Then again, of, again, <laughs> come to a point that 
we all mention is a failure. And failure is part of the game. And failure comes in many forms. This is perhaps something that, that you need. I mean, that my experience tells me, you know, sometimes it's a grind that does not come. Sometimes is an overhaul at, in the board. Sometimes it's that you feel a technology that is not ready yet. Uh, and you understand uh, while you dig deep into the market that it will take a longer time to be there. I mean, we did this with the radio frequency identification. I mean, one of the entrepreneurial adventures that I did, we understood that this thing is not going to come in the form for any time soon. And then you need to simply accept that it does not make sense. This is, a, again, sort of a kind of failure. But um, you need to start again. And the point is, is that it's simply because it's, it's too great. And also, <laughs> once you start, then you simply want to start again. Sometimes you may be tired after a big disappointment, but this is the way it is. And, uh, and it is very, very important because the learnings, you know, what I said at the beginning, you know, this naive vision <laughs> gets less naive and less naive as, as you go along your learning path. And uh, although I still feel that so many times I'm too naive, I, at least I hope that I'm less naive than 10 years ago. And uh, with this, I come to, yeah, the last point, which is perhaps to me have been at the end, the deepest motivation. Of course, there is the content. Of course, there is the vision, the dream. But at the end of all this, building a company is one of the most rewarding experiences in life. I mean, is I mean, sometimes I, I call it is a, I mean, it's a fight against entropy. You know, you try to build the structure against the forces that will try to create disorder and tear things apart. It's a bit philosophical, but in a certain sense, it is like companies are systems, are uh, living creatures that, that, that order and try, you know, to, um, to prosper and survive against the forces that are around that will try to tear them apart. And, uh, and seeing one growing is, uh, yeah, I mean, it's something that you cannot describe. It's simply one of the most beautiful things in life. And yes, with this, I'm done with my short overview <laughs> of yeah, my takeaways of yeah, several years in trying to do companies. Wow, Gianluca, that was very poetic at the end. <laughs> that is it, the Startup Campus Consortium, um, where ETH Zurich is also part of. Wants to thank everybody for being here, for asking your questions. And a very big thank you goes out to Anna and Gianluca for sharing their stories, for answering your questions. And also a thank you to Merle for co-hosting tonight with me. It was her very first time. So I think she made a great, she did a great job. And that's it. Thank you very much for joining us and we hope you had fun.